going to do a quick video on a league starter atlas tree. I think the main points are to get atlas progression, gearing, and then also start farming scarabs because sextants are being removed this league and in their place are scarabs. So a lot of the modifiers that come from sextants will be on scarabs and they'll probably be, I mean, it's the main way to juice maps now. So whatever strategy you will want to use will eventually need these scarabs. So we'll start off with um, the bottom of the tree and we'll basically just grab some free strong boxes. And that's probably the best way to get some extra content, but also eventually this will probably be a decent source of scarabs in my opinion, because they did add a modifier to strong boxes, which I will show above. And because of that chance for that modifier, then your strong boxes will also be a good source of scarabs, not only from like global drops. And then once we go up, we will go towards Kirag. Um, on the way there, we'll also get scouting reports. Kirag will enable us to reroll him for maps that we need, and also his missions for maps that we also need for completion. And because of those Atlas um, nodes, once we start getting towards the end, we will have a decent number of Explorer uh, scouting reports. And with these Explorer scouting reports, it will force every uh, map to be the ones that you're missing. So if you only have a few left, like let's say your last few T16s, then you can do um, the Karak missions and then reroll them to have the maps that you're missing. And because of the mechanic where if that map shows up even as a white tier Karak mission, so like if you should probably have plenty of white tier Karak missions, then you can actually do the red tier map if it's rare and corrupted because that's what you need. The map needs to be rare and corrupted for completion of um, a red tier map. But same thing, like let's say you're missing a yellow tier map, then even if it shows up as a white tier or a red tier mission, then as long as that one's rare, then once you finish running that map, then you'll get that completion. So it's basically just a simple, uh, easy way to get map completion. But also if you want an easier T16, then maybe you'll get it as a t5 map and then you'll run that rare and corrupted and then you'll also get your atlas completion point for that map even though it's a white tier map so i think that's a pretty cool mechanic um and then for gearing we want expedition so expedition uh all these notes here i have rog uh selected and also danig because of um people like want expedition uh logbooks and same thing here expedition logbooks and also more monsters and then a giant explosion so just a way to craft your own gear but if you don't want to craft your own gear you want currency then tujin is a decent way of getting early currency so that's you know points to be put in there instead um and then at the top here i guess we should go over the scarab nodes real quick so just chance for more scarabs from maps. Um, these will specify what scarabs or yeah, what increased chance of scarabs you want. I just picked one random from each. You probably don't want to pick them all. Maybe you just want to pick a couple that you want. I just picked the ones that I thought were good for me at least. So more strong boxes for ambush. Reliquary for more uniques. Uh, they haven't revealed them all yet, I believe. So just getting that there for those three and then essences scarabs for much later these will be useful later um but not early on because of like how the they did change some of these nodes to be uh not as good as they used to be and maybe even scarier if you're in hardcore so just random scarabs so look over the ones that maybe you would want instead these are just the ones i put here for me uh early on and then you want more rare uh less common variety uh most common varieties of scarabs and the boss has a chance to drop scarabs and then rare monsters have a chance to drop scarabs as well and these up here are random uh, map ones so if you want a better chance to get uh, once you start doing like t14 plus maps if you want conqueror bosses or yeah conqueror uh, guardians uh, and then elder or shaper guardian and then Synthesis uh, map bosses. I believe you need to do these map bosses now to get the Cortex map. They won't just be like a random drop from like a normal T14 or T16 map. So I think these will be, at least this is the strategy I will be using uh, early on. 
and oh, I guess I did miss something. Um, so strong boxes, there's nothing new here. Uh, extra strong box, rare corrupted. I think it's not as bad as it used to be. I would never get the duplicate map one. I'm still not doing it, but it won't be as bad because they did change um, how corrupted maps work. They can no longer be unidentified and they might give you like special quant modifiers instead. So maybe you'll want duplicated rare maps uh, or a chance for duplicated rare maps to drop, but I feel like there's no synergy there. And it's like, you know, you just don't want um, duplicate like white corrupted T16s or T14s. And then chance for duplicating or reopening the box to be able uh, yeah, to open the box again. So I think there's a synergy there with the Scarab mod. So when the strong box gets that Scarab mod, then you have a chance to maybe pop out like three at a time. So then if you get lucky and open that one strong box like three times, that's nine of one scarab. So that's just the idea there. And then obviously duplicate currency and duplicate um, divination cards. I enjoy the divination cards, even if they're not the best, uh, usually from like the divination strong box. So I think that's the main idea for this beginner tree. Not a lot of points. So it is plenty of room to be modified further. Um, I will have a um, more, uh, I guess, late game uh, tree, but this is just uh, for Atlas completion mainly and early gearing and then getting extra scarabs. Uh, links will be in the description. And we will move on to a more late game tree. So the idea for this tree is to get scarabs, farm abyss. And I think that's basically the idea here. I think minion builds will be pretty popular this league, so that's the main idea of why I would want to farm Abyss, um, at least on the map. If you were to go for Abyssal Deaths, you can, because there is the some of the Abyss tools there might be useful. But the main idea is to get the corrupted 5 or 6 random mod ones, because those can't be made naturally, so those might be pretty high value, because if you get like 5 or 6 good mods on it, then you know enough people would want those because they just aren't naturally makeable or rollable and they can add way more damage or utility than people uh than normal um i don't think this tree is too special again it's just scarabs uh strong boxes and then the only difference mainly is um increased uh effect modifiers on your maps so these will make your maps more dangerous so that's why this is a more of a late game tree now, I guess also you should have Eater Influence unlocked. You don't necessarily have to go for Eater if it's not for you. Um, you can spec out of it and then use the gates to spec into, uh, what's it called? Into uh, Exarch. So don't have to spec into Eater only, but because we're close there, it's pretty point efficient just to grab all the Eater stuff while you're mapping to get like duplicate currencies. Um, I think that's about it. Um, I do have other ideas for um, Atlas trees, but I think these are probably the two most generic um, and safe, I think, for um, the upcoming league. Again, the, this will also be linked below in the description. And I think I am done.